Thank you. Uh, it's been a, a very interesting uh, summer school for, uh, for me uh, so far. So thank you um, very much, uh, everyone, um, for putting this together and the opportunity uh, to speak. Uh, this is all joint work with Tom Bachman that you heard from a few days ago. And we'll start with the application to, to counting um, linear subspaces. Uh, let's give ourselves notation for K, a field. And um, F1 through Fj, uh, homogeneous polynomials that are going to cut out what's called a complete intersection on projective space. So there's um, uh, the homogeneous coordinates, homogeneous. Um, coordinates of projective space, and we can look at this variety, uh, which is um, uh, the, the common zero locus of F1 through uh, Fj. And if this is dimension um, n minus j, that's what it means for um, x to be a complete intersection. Um, so we're, we're going to be counting uh, linear subspaces. Let's let's say explicitly what what a linear subspace is. So uh, an R plane in X is a copy of um, p to the r cut out inside p to the n by linear equations. Um, uh, we're going to let these linear equations have coefficients in some field extension. Okay, side E. Um, and then we get, uh, it will be an R plane in X if it sits inside um, uh, X uh, viewed, as, viewed as a scheme over E of um, uh, 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 so, so that there's our, um, our, our linear subspaces of dimension R. So the, the space of all linear subspaces is a Grassmannian. Um, uh, so this is the Grassmannian parameterizing PRs in PN. Um, equivalently, it's the space of um, R plus one dimensional subspaces of an n plus one dimensional vector space and we've got some different choices for for notation for this but let's go with gr uh, r um, n and here if we have a a subspace w we can take um, its projectivization and we get a pr we can even make it a different color. We have um, the, the, the subspace W, sort of a point in this, this Grassmannian goes to its projectivization. Um, and, and there we've got some, some notation for, for Grassmannian. Um, so excuse, the Grassmannian. Kirsten, excuse me, there's a question, question for you in the, in the chat. Um, uh, uh, like you, you, you want, you want, you want this. Great, thank you. So, so Haynes says it's, it's just a closed subscheme. It's, it's not. Um, so, uh, oh, and this one too. I guess in principle we could have uh, X B a linear subspace, and then maybe it would be um, equal. Um, uh, 
so um, XE is, is some, uh, uh, some interesting variety cut out by equations of different degrees. And inside them, they might have uh, points, lines, two-dimensional planes, three-dimensional planes. And I'm just saying that, you know, that, uh, explicitly here. Um, uh, uh, that, um, that this, we're, we're allowed to have our, our linear equations have, a, have coefficients in E in some extension. Does that make sense? Great. Um, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, so um, we've got a tautological bundle. And it's the vector bundle so that over the point corresponding to the subspace W, your um, fiber is uh, W. W itself. And um, we're allowed to uh, do vector space operations on, on bundles. And um, the one that comes up for uh, looking at these um, uh, complete intersections, let's look at sin D of the dual of S. Um, this is the, the vector bundle on the Grassmannian, which at a, at a point W, uh, we have um, the uh, degree D polynomials uh, on the, the vector space um, uh, W. So let's, let's give ourselves notation for the degrees of the Fi. So um, let Di equal degree um, Fi. And Fi determines um, a section of sim di s dual w. Um, let's call this section uh, sigma i um, by sigma i at the point w is fi restricted to w. Fi is a um, <clears throat> uh, fi is a polynomial on the entire vector space, <clears throat> so it restricts to a polynomial on each of the w and um the uh uh it this gives an element of sim di of sw so from the choice of our equations uh we get a section sigma as the sum sigma sigma one plus uh sigma d <coughs> sigma j uh section of let's call this vector bundle v for convenience of the direct sum of the sim uh, di uh, s dual. Now we can express um, the space of all r planes in x as the, the zeros of this section. So um, let's let frx, this is the space of r planes um, in x, it's the uh, subscheme of the Grassmannian determined by uh, sigma equals zero. And it's a result of uh, debar Manavel that for generic um, Fi, um, this is smooth of the expected dimension. For uh, generic um, uh, Fi. Um, uh, so um, uh, why is the vanishing of, of sigma, the space of our planes in X, um, it's, it's because we have a plane, P of W is uh, in X, um, if and only if um, the restriction of Fi to W equals zero for, for all these, for all these I's. Um, uh, so, so we know what, what our uh, dimension is. Um, we've got the, the space cut out as the uh, zeros of a section of a vector bundle. So the, um, the dimension of FR, we'll call this uh, delta, is the dimension of the Grassmannian uh, minus the rank of the vector bundle. And um, uh, 
uh, the, the rank of the vector bundle was the number of polynomials of degree di in in our variables, and it, it's it's all um, it, uh, to to be explicit about it, it is uh, it's uh, di plus r choose 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 r. So let's do examples when we get a finite count. So, um, uh, we've got it's finite for lines on a cubic surface. Uh, lines on a degree 2n minus 1 hypersurface of dimension n, uh, three planes on a degree d hypersurface of uh, dimension uh, 2 plus 1 fourth d plus 3 choose 3. To give a, an example where it's more than a hypersurface, we could take lines on a complete CI for complete intersection of um, 2 degree n minus 2 um, uh, polynomials, polys in Pn. Uh, we're going to say n odd um, because we're going to want all these examples to also be orientable in a second. Um, in, in any event, there are uh, there are tons of infinite families of these um, for not just lines and three planes, but 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 all the way up for two planes too, for that matter. Um, uh, 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 so um, in any of these cases, there's some finite number of R planes. And a uh, question is, is what is that finite number? So when delta equals zero, how many uh, R planes uh, are um, in X? And um, the answer, at least for K equals C, over the complex numbers, um, when we want to solve equations, we have this nice algebraically closed field. We have a nice topology on it. Um, and, and this is a, a classical topological Euler number. Um, uh, we can see that it's the Euler number of the vector bundle we call V. This was the sum of the symmetric powers. And one property of uh, uh, Euler numbers is that they can be computed um, with respect to any section. Uh, as a sum over the zeros of the section. And th this is valid because the zeros of sigma are isolated. And so we're taking the zeros of the section, gr for Grassmannian, and w is a zero means uh, this is equal to zero. And it's of uh, some, some local degree. We can view a section of a vector bundle as a function locally function from c to the dimension to c to the dimension. c has a nice orientation um, fixed on it. Uh, and then uh, we can take the, the topological degree of a map of, of small balls. Um, by the debar manivel result, um, the zeros of sigma are also simple because uh, the zero locus was smooth. And everything is orientation preserving. So what this gives us is a sum over one of these same uh, zeros of sigma. And uh, as we commented above, uh, the zeros of sigma are exactly the R planes. So this is the number of R planes in, in X. Uh, in particular, this first equality here shows that um, the, the answer doesn't depend on your polynomials. It only depends on their, their degree. Only depends on the di as opposed to the fi. Um, uh, so uh, one very pretty example is that um, there are 27 lines on a cubic surface, a generic cubic surface. generic uh, 
um, I got off the internet a photo um, from uh, the Göttingen uh, Universität uh, that's credited to um, o, o Zausig, and there's a Klepsch cubic surface, and there are uh, 27, 27 lines uh, on it. Um, uh, to, to go up some dimensions, which, which means we won't look at it, but um, there are also, for example, uh, 321,489 three planes on a generic uh, cubic seven dimensional hypersurface. And for, for any specific ones you want, you could, um, uh, you could get, get this answer. Um, using cohomology of, of Grassmannian's um, uh, uh, the splitting principle and, and uh, useful tools. Um, so uh, let, let's change um, k from, from c to r. So when, when k is equal to uh, uh, r, um, we want to use an Euler number again. And for this, we need v to be orientable. There's again a... Uh, um, a way to express this just in terms of um, the, the constants we have around. So the, uh, this is equivalent to this, this sum of uh, di over r plus one, di plus r, choose r plus n plus one being congruent to zero uh, mod two. And all the previous examples are um, so examples, um, delta equals zero orientable, all of those above. And um, uh, we can again compute the, uh, the Euler number. It's again, can be computed with respect to a section. And again, since the zeros are isolated, we have that this is a sum over uh, the points of the Grassmannian of um, these zeros. And then there's this uh, local uh, term, uh, local degree of a, of a function. So um, uh, if we look at sigma in some small neighborhood u of a zero of w, it's going to look like um, a function from, uh, from uh, r to the dimension um, to the rank, which is, which is the same. And then in coordinates, um, you'd have, uh, let's say, sigma upper i be the ith coordinate when you view it as a function. And we can take um, uh, the, the partials with respect to the coordinates x, j on, on Rn. Let's let this be denoted by the Jacobian of sigma, the determinant of, um, of this matrix. Let's make the, this a little clearer. And then the local degree is the sine, plus one when it's positive, minus one when it's a negative, of this Jacobian. And so what this gives is some uh, plus ones and some minus ones. This is a weighted count of the R planes. And it's also a lower bound. Um, uh, so uh, while the, the number of R planes can vary um, from, uh, say, uh, a generic seven-dimensional cubic hypersurface to, to another seven-dimensional generic uh, uh, cubic hypersurface, there is some signed count of, of these um, three planes, uh, which doesn't. And um, Fineshin and Karlamov write a paper about the whole family of, of three uh, plane counting problems, and uh, in particular, so, so they do this on the degree d plus one hypersurface in general, and there is 189 three planes on a seven-dimensional uh, cubic hypersurface um, uh, 
weighted count um, over R. Uh, so um, with uh, the A1 Euler class introduced in, in Mark Levine's talks, we can obtain a count uh, over any field. Um, let's. Sorry, sorry uh, Kirsten, to interrupt. Uh, before you continue, maybe there's a there's a question for you in the Q and A. Um, uh, that's right. So, uh, um, um, this so uh, the the Q and A is pointing out that this needs to be an integer. Um, and uh, it, it is uh, uh, many times. Um, uh, uh, thanks. Um, uh, let's uh, talk about A1 Euler um, uh, classes and numbers. Um, so let's let V over Y be a vector bundle uh, with a section on a smooth scheme Y. The section um, uh, S. Uh, and um, uh, Barge and Morel. Uh, defined an, an Euler class uh, in the oriented Chow of Y twisted by uh, the, the dual of the determinant. Um, uh, and this Euler class was, there was a, there's a, a one in oriented Chow and um, you can push forward the one by the section and pull back exactly as, um, as Mark outlined um, uh, last week. Uh, and uh, Let's, let's list a whole bunch of Euler classes um, uh, uh, um, So uh, although we haven't introduced um, oriented Chow, it's a, a sum of, uh, of, of cycles with, with coefficients um, and, and let's, uh, uh, let's not worry about that. Uh, uh, too much at the moment, and this was further developed by uh, Fazel and Ashok Fazel and Mark Levine. Um, uh, and um, another description of the Euler class is it's a principal obstruction to having a non-vanishing section. Um, and uh, in A1 algebraic topology over a field, Morel develops an Euler class um, uh, encoding that, that principal obstruction. Um, in joint work with Jesse Cass, we made an Euler class uh, designed for enumerative problems that was the sum of the, the degrees over the zeros of S of, of local degrees of S. This is an Euler number. Um, uh, in a beautiful paper on fundamental classes, uh, De Blis, Jin, and Khan uh, give uh, constructions of, of Euler classes. And in particular, uh, Mark uh, uh, presented um, uh, using this uh, last week. And one of the things this does is we get Euler classes valued in cohomology theories uh, that are represented by SL-oriented. Um, uh, spectra. Another thing that uh, Mark uh, talked to us about was a pairing on the Kazool complex. Um, uh, and uh, in joint work with between uh, Levine and Raxet, they show that um, this is the Euler class for the, the tangent bundle. Um, uh, Mike Hopkins actually, uh, after a talk I gave, uh, eyeballed uh, the, the pairing on the Kazool and, and, and asserted it, it was the same. And I've, I've heard uh, Mark uh, say a, a nice story about um, a similar um, uh, response of, of, of Sarah. I'll just put everybody's um, name down if, if um, that's okay. Um, the, the last list in our, in our 
point of view on Euler class list that, that we have here um, is to take the opportunity uh, to talk about my women in topology group looking at the Hochschild homology um, uh, and putting the pairing um, that the, the folks who, who think of coherent duality in terms of Hochschild homology um, give us uh, and showing this is this uh, uh, A1 Euler class. And this is work of Candace Bethea, uh, Nini Arsila Maya, Morgan Opie, um, uh, Ina Zakarevich. So um, one of the things done in the, in the paper that this talk is about is to check um, uh, qualities um, for, for some of these. Uh, so um, uh, the, the, these local degrees and, and the push forward and for appropriate E and the Kazool um, uh, for, for general vector bundles. Um, uh, as a warning, um, there's a, a very interesting um, a paper of Ashak and Fazel about comparing these two, and they, they are equal up to a unit, but in a, in a context where there are actually quite a lot of units. Um, uh, uh, so um, it's, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting class, it's an interesting number, and there are a lot of different points of view on it. Um, and uh, for moving forward uh, with, with the, the story, um, let's, let's summarize this by saying when y over k is smooth, the dimension of y is the rank of the bundle, and v is a generalization of orientable called relatively orientable. Then we have an Euler number, I'll call it e of v, uh, living in the growth in Dikovit group of, of K. Um, I'm going to uh, spell out what the growth in Dikovit group of K is very explicitly because it's um, concrete and our accounts record concrete um, arithmetic information valued in this group. Um, uh, so uh, let's let A um, be a ring. And GW of A is going to be the group of um, formal uh, differences of um, isomorphism classes of non degenerate asymmetric. Uh, bilinear forms. And this group of formal differences called a group completion and for a field this has a very nice presentation. So presentation for A equals K a field then uh, any um, bilinear form uh, can be symmetric bilinear form can be diagonalized. So the generators are uh, one dimensional forms for A and K star over K tar star squared, as in uh, Mark's talk. A is on the one dimensional vector space K, K cross K to K. And we take, as a bilinear form, we take xy to, to axy. And it just has a few um, relations. We have that ab equals ab and a plus b equal oops, a plus b when that's not 1 plus ab um, a plus b. And um, this implies that there are a bunch of ways to write a special form called the hyperbolic form, that um, a plus minus a um, is this uh, hyperbolic form, um, h uh, one, one plus minus one. Um, uh, I'll, I'll give a whole bunch of um, explicit examples. Uh, so 
the growth and defect group of C um, is that there's, they're up to squares, uh, all, all elements are the same in, in, in C star. Uh, so if we just take the underlying dimension of the vector space, um, the growth and defect group of C is Z by the rank. And over R, um, when we diagonalize, we have some number of ones and minus ones. The difference between those is the signature and um, that induces an isomorphism up to a parity condition. Um, the, uh, for, for fields like um, a finite field with Q elements or C uh, T, um, we have that um, the first two invariants of quadratic forms coming from the, the Milner conjecture uh, invariants give, uh, give the whole growth and, de growth and fit group. Um, the first two are the rank and the discriminant. That's a determinant of, uh, of, uh, of when you write the bilinear form uh, as, a, as a matrix. Um, so this goes to Z to K star over um, K star squared, which let's say Q is odd, uh, gives Z cross Z mod two. And uh, then we have invariants coming from the, the Milner conjecture, um, which was a great uh, achievement of, um, of a1 homotopy theory. The, the title of this talk was about integrality results. And that means that uh, we want to use where the vector bundle is defined. Um, if it's defined over, over Z or some sort of ring of integers, we want to um, uh, compute or say things about the computation of what the Euler, Euler number is. So uh, let's also say that the growth and deep bit group of the integers, although there are many very interesting, highly non-trivial, um, uh, non-degenerate uh, symmetric bilinear forms over Z. Once you group complete, you, you only get Z cross Z. It's a number of ones and, and number of, of minus ones. For, instance, for example, sitting inside GW of Q um, or, or GW of R, maybe, maybe more straightforwardly. Um, uh, we have a Milner exact sequence giving us the growth and bit group of uh, Z1 over N and it will sit inside the growth and bit group of Q and then um, there's some boundary maps to the bit group is the growth and bit group uh, divided by the, the hyperbolic form um, for uh, Q not dividing N. Um, uh, the, um, the, the last thing we'll need to, to, state, to state results um, are the explicitly giving transfers. Um, uh, we can uh, assume the only thing we'll need to write down um, theorems is transfers for an extension of fields. KL that we can assume to be finite separable because the debar Manivelle result will say that our, our zero locus is smooth and so corresponds to separable extensions. And uh, then we will have a transfer map from uh, L over K from the growth and bit group of L to the growth and bit group of K. Um, uh, and it'll take a bilinear form, beta V cross V to L, and I'll take its class to the composition of um, beta with the, the sum of the Galois conjugates, the, the trace from, uh, uh, from, from Galois theory. Um, uh, so, um, Let's let's talk more about the um, uh, about growth and bit 
Um, but I also, I wanna pause for any questions so far. Um, if, you, if you think of others, uh, please don't hesitate uh, to interrupt. Um, so the, the GW of fields pieces together to make an unramified uh, sheaf by a procedure in Morel's A1 algebraic topology. So it gives um, unramified sheaf uh, GW, say on smooth schemes over K. Um, and uh, the uh, sections over X, they're inside the, the sections on um, K of X, on the, on the field of functions of X. And you can extend over uh, uh, any um, closed subset of co-dimension at least two. Um, it's given by intersection of, of kernels of, of certain boundary maps for co-dimension one points. Um, and it has an alternative description. It's the sheafification in the Niznevich or um, Zariski topology of um, uh, sending X um, to uh, GW of X, where, where now this means the symmetric non-degenerate uh, bilinear forms on, on vector bundles um, uh, on, our, on our X. Um, and this is a great sheaf. Um, uh, uh, but from the perspective of, um, of descent, sheafifying uh, isomorphism classes is, is an odd thing to do. When we if, we, if we want to glue together objects, we not only want I, to know they're isomorphic on overlaps, we might want to keep track of, uh, of the data of that isomorphism, have it satisfy um, conditions. So uh, one thing that, that, that comes up is that you can have a sheaf of spaces version, make it a curly, a curly GW. Um, so let bilinear of X be the space of um, vector bundles uh, with a symmetric non-degenerate uh, bilinear form. Uh, and then we can sheafify um, the group completion of this. So uh, let's let one half be invertible. Let's let these be schemes um, uh, uh, over uh, Z one half and have this be uh, um, a sheaf valued in spaces and we'll let it be the sheafification of uh, X goes to the uh, group completion of um, the, uh, this, uh, these, these bilinear forms. Um, and there's a map uh, to the sheaf of spaces associated um, to uh, Hermitian K theory. We've got a homotopy invariant uh, version on the right um, and uh, our, our sheaf version of uh, growth and deke um, uh, uh, that sheaves uh, on the left. Um, we can take uh, Euler classes um, in the in, in Hermitian K theory um, or related theories and get good functoriality properties um, associated with them uh, uh, to, to give us um, integrality integrality results. Let's get back to um, counting our planes and less questions, yes. Um, so uh, it, it's necessary to invert two um, uh, when, when considering uh, duality. So uh, bilinear forms, there are a lot of different, um, there, when, when two is not invertible, bilinear forms and quadratic forms are, are different. It turns out there are a lot of different variants um, 
for um, uh, for four notions of um, uh, of a duality uh, on on vector bundles when when two is two is not invertible. Um, uh, so um, it, uh, it it makes a Hermitian K theory defined with with current uh, machinery, and there are a lot of interesting things uh, to say about inverting two. Uh, so so thank you for the the question. Returning to to counting R planes. on complete intersections. Let's list some things we know. Um, uh, in, in joint work uh, with Jesse Cass, um, we computed the, a count of lines on a, on a cubic surface, which is the, the computation of the Euler uh, number for sim three of S-dual on the Grassmannian. And it is 15, one, plus 12 uh, times minus one. And uh, it's, this is also a sum over the lines of uh, an index involving the field of definition of the line uh, and some, some information about how the, tangent, um, how the tangent plane spins along the line. Um, uh, this is for K of field. And um, Mark Levine developed a theory of uh, bit valued characteristic classes and uh, computes that uh, uh, the Euler number of uh, sim of uh, 2d minus 1 of S dual counting lines um, on, uh, uh, on um, PD plus 1 is. Uh, 2d minus 1 factorial factorial, I'll tell you what that means, uh, plus a multiple of h. And the multiple of h is, is designed uh, to make, so ec for uh, Euler number of, of complex points minus um, 2d minus 1 factorial factorial over 2 times this hyperbolic form. Um, so here, uh, 2d minus 1 uh, factorial factorial is 2d minus 1 times 2d minus three uh, times one. And uh, so k is a field um, uh, with, with characteristic uh, prime to two and times 2d minus one. Um, and uh, ec is the normal topological Euler number of the, the complex points of c. Um, uh, Stephen McKean, uh, um, gave a uh, enrichment of Bazou's theorem along with uh, geometric interpretations of local indices, and that gives the calculation of um, vector bundles, so counting points on PN, that's just PN, um, as a multiple of H. And uh, Sabrina Pauli, also along with uh, uh, interesting geometric interpretations um, uh, redoes the cubic surface and does the quintic threefold with um, a theory of dynamic um, intersections. Uh, you can hear her talk about this at motive and uh, motives and um, and whatnot um, coming soon. Uh, um, Um, so we have uh, enriched counts of, uh, of R planes. Um, let's uh, formalize this notation EC. So let's let, um, uh, it's on July 29th. Uh, thank you. Um, so uh, let's let EC be this uh, Euler number of the complex points and ER um, be the Euler number of the real points. And um, uh, a theorem I'd like to, to talk about uh, from this paper 
is um, that the, the enriched count is uh, the sum of ones and minus ones that you would get from the, from the real and, and, and complex point count. So let's let um, R be a ring with uh, one half um, uh, in R. Uh, let, and you can also do just a field of characteristic two. Um, we'll consider the vector bundle we started with um, the sum of uh, the di symmetric power of the dual tautological over um, um, uh, the Grossmannian, and let's let it be relatively um, oriented with dimension of V, uh, is the rank of V is the dimension of the Grassmannian. Um, and uh, so this has, uh, we, can, we can rewrite this in, in terms of parity conditions and, and sum conditions. So i.e. we want the sum of di over r plus one, uh, di plus r choose r, plus n plus one congruent to zero um, uh, mod two and the dimension equaling the rank uh, dimension of Grassmannian r plus one times n minus r is the, the rank di plus r choose r. Um, uh, and so uh, then the, these vector bundles that we were interested in um, the, the Euler number is EC plus ER over two times one plus EC minus ER over two uh, uh, times, times negative one. Um, and for example, we can get an enriched count of three planes on a generic seven dimensional cubic hypersurface. So there are 160,839 one plus 160,650 minus one, three planes in a seven dimensional um, cubic um, hypersurface. Uh, and uh, as uh, to, to put this back in terms of um, accounting R planes, if we take the sum over the R planes, we'll call the R plane P in our complete intersection X of the, this trace, and we know it's for a separable field extension by Debar Manivelle of the Jacobian, we express um, our, our function sigma in terms of local coordinates and take some derivatives, then this is um, uh, the, the, same, the same number up here. Um, and while uh, the number on the right hand side uh, is uh, some ones and some minus ones, these, these are not in general sums of ones and minus ones. Um, they just have to sum to them. Uh, uh, and as suggested by the title, uh, this is proven uh, with an integrality result. The count of the lines on X reduced to a bundle on a Grassmannian that was defined over Z. It's the section that is defined over the interesting equations of X. And th that's why the, um, the left-hand side here has all sorts of interesting summands, and um, the the right-hand side picks up the fact that the Grassmannian is defined over Z. Um, so uh, uh, theorem two, this is all joint with Tom Bachman. Um, uh, so let's let um, V over Y be a relatively uh, oriented. Uh, vector bundle 
with V and Y defined over um, Z adjoin one over D factorial, and uh, D is greater than or equal to to, to two um, uh, with Y um, smooth and proper. SM for smooth and proper over the same base. Um, uh, then the uh, Euler number has to be in the subring uh, uh, generated by minus one and um, the two, three, all the way up to D inside GW of K. Um, and uh, in the case of D equals two, there, this leaves two possibilities. So then either um, E of V is the, the quantity, I think maybe I'll still be able to paste it, this, this quantity here, um, or uh, it's what we get by um, putting in a single two, um, but, but keeping, keeping the, the signature the same. Um, uh, so um, uh, we can distinguish between these um, possibilities uh, by uh, taking uh, an, an Euler number over some single prime where, where two, two is not a square. And in order to, to prove um, the result about the symmetric powers, um, we use a characteristic class uh, argument to get rid of this, uh, this, second, this second possibility. Um, uh, um, the, the characteristic class argument owes uh, a lot to Mark Levine's fit value uh, characteristic classes. Um, uh, this would be a good time to, to pause for, for questions. Are there any? All right. Um, so uh, theorem two um, is proven by using an, an Euler class for a uh, good SL-oriented theory, um, for example, uh, KO. Um, and uh, the, uh, the D greater than or equal to two restriction comes from, uh, comes from wanting to use KO. Uh, and there is um, currently uh, a collaboration Uh, on uh, KO without inverting two um, with uh, Baptiste uh, Calmez, Emmanuel Dotto, Jonathan Harpaz, um, Fabian Hebestrait, uh, Marcus Land, Christian Moy, Dennis Nardan, Thomas Nicolaus, Wolfgang, Stum and um, Marcus Bitzbeck, I, um, I understand also has work uh, around this. Let's let's put that. Let's, let's put Marcus Spitzbeck, um here too. Um, uh, so my understanding is that um, that uh, it is expected that um, they will show that uh, if you take K theory, let's call that uh, KGL. And taking a vector space to its dual gives a C2 action, and you can take a, a homotopy fixed points um, of uh, C2. And it's expected that the, um, uh, if, if you make a, a substitute for Hermitian K theory by taking the homotopy fixed points of KGL and completing it too, that it can be shown that um, uh, this is the growth of the fit group of Z uh, completed it too. Um, so this exists over at, at Z. So it exists over Z. Um, it's uh, SL oriented. 
And there's a, um, you can read about it in a paper of Bachman and Mike Hopkins. Um, and while it doesn't respect base change, it does have some maps. And so this is sufficient they, um, to show the same integrality statement for D equals one. to show um, the integrality result theorem two um, for D equals one, um, uh, because the, the Euler number with respect, if we let this, this gadget be um, KO prime, um, then the Euler number with respect to KO prime, it's, um, it's here. And there is enough functoriality so that we'll have to map to the, if we pull back to Z um, joining one half um, to KO prime, it'll, it'll map to the corresponding number. Um, moreover, there, there's a map from KO to KO prime, um, giving that the uh, Euler number when KO exists over one half maps here too. Um, and the, um, uh, since these two elements map to um, uh, the same element in there, um, they determine an element of, this, of the fiber product of GW of Z one half, GW of Z completed at two um, over GW of Z one half completed at two. And this is GW of Z. Um, so uh, the, the, we'd get this stronger um, integrality result um, uh, uh, with, with, with that work. Uh, in the spirit of a, a summer school, I'd like to end with some open uh, problems. Uh, the, uh, the zeroth open problem is, can be expressed somewhat facetiously like this. I mean, there are a lot of um, uh, great results uh, um, in uh, Eisenbud Harris's uh, 3264 and all that, or Fulton's uh, intersection uh, theory. Um, that uh, give uh, interesting enumerators of results. And um, uh, there are beautiful enumerative results having deep connections to uh, uh, many areas of, of mathematics. So the zeroth problem is, uh, can A1 homotopy theory enrich, enrich them? Uh, so take a problem from Eisenbud, Harris, 32, 64 and all that Fulton intersection theory. Let's give more of a preamble to this question. So, um, there are beautiful results in A1 enumerative, uh, in enumerative geometry, can A1 homotopy theory enrich them? In enumerative geometry, uh, can A1 homotopy theory uh, enrich them? Uh, I don't think, I, I wrote down um, two uh, taken, um, uh, somewhat haphazardly from uh, Eisenbud Harris. And I don't have time to write them down, but let me just, just read to, so that we're on the same page about um, the, uh, what, what question zero is, is trying to suggest. So uh, let V1 through V2n be general tangent vector fields in Pn. At how many points of Pn is there a cotangent vector annihilated by all of them? And uh, Another one is given four curves, C1, C2, C3, C4, and P3. 
of degrees, D1, D2, D3, D4, how many lines meet general translates of all four. I'll add these to the notes and, and, and put them in. Um, uh, to be less um, hand-wavy uh, about this, um, in the corollary above, um, we didn't have the analog of um, the uh, of interesting descriptions in terms of the, the complete intersection itself. So geometric interpretation in terms of X, um, they're, they're very concrete uh, examples of this uh, um, for this Jacobian, which is sort of living on the, uh, on the, um, on the moduli space, so beyond uh, cubic surface, quintic threefold, the zoo. Um, to connect up with Marco Ribolo's talk, the, um, the, the Hochschild homology of that matrix factorization algebra that, that showed up, it has a pairing on it. And that pairing is the A1 Milner number of the singularity, an element of the, the growth and deep vit group. But there's also inside this um, K naught of varieties, this cut and paste relation, there's this motivic um, Milner fiber and a compactly supported A1 Euler characteristic that Mark Levine uh, told us about. Um, so uh, the, these, the, this, this should be all, all equal. Um, and uh, the list should continue. Um, the, you, you lose uh, certain tools and you gain others. For example, Ananyevsky's um, beautiful splitting pr principle, uh, the multiplicativity of Euler numbers and exact sequences is no longer nearly as useful because you really can't divide. But the Kazool uh, interpretation of Euler numbers gives you some control in exact sequences, but in general, it's hard. So um, are, are, there better, are, there, are there better tools? Uh, there, there is really structure here and an arithmetic information um, that, that lies away from C. And what is it? Um, uh, I'll stop there. Okay. Thank you, Kirsten, for a wonderful talk. So um, let's hear some questions. And uh, maybe I can ask by... Um, um, by asking you if there's some connection between your work and oriented Schubert calculus. Ah, for, uh, so Matthias Vent, um, uh, absolutely. Um, so uh, Matthias Vent uh, has information on the oriented Chow of um, uh, Grassmannians in, in terms of uh, some generalizations of, of Schubert calculus and that gives uh, other interesting ways to, um, to compute um, these Euler numbers. It doesn't directly um, use it, but um, th there is uh, interesting things to be said about that. Okay, great. I, I have a question um, from my face. Um, so this last, this last question, the A1 Milner number equals the um, Euler characteristic of the motivic Milner fiber, you said the left-hand side comes from um, a pairing on Hochschild homology. Can you say a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, so the, um, the I think maybe the um, a better way to start with what the A1 Milner number is is if um, if you have a point P of f equals zero, the A1 Milner number, um, if this P is a singularity, is um, is can be defined to be this this local degree at p of the gradient of f but then this is also the Hochschild homology of this matrix factorizations um uh uh for for f um and that's by explicitly marco told us that this was the jacobian ring um and uh this this local degree um can be computed as the Jacobian ring, and this can be computed as the code Jacobian ring, and the pairing on Hochschild homology is uh, is the same. So we, we get we get this equality here. So this one wouldn't be part of the problem, and then this one um, uh, I think is open. What what um, pairing is natural, what pairing is there on Hochschild homology? 
Ah, great. So um, uh, Lippmann and uh, uh, um, I'm blanking. Um, so uh, there's there's even a six functor formalism uh, in in Hochschild homology, and it it it's a way of expressing things about coherent duality in terms of of Hochschild homology. And um, I am embarrassingly uh, blanking on on the important names involved in in constructing that pairing. Um, uh, but it's also, uh, in, in this context, it, we wrote it down in the, the Women in Topology group um, to... Uh, okay. um, Great. So, and you're too young to be blanking on these things. <laughs> Thanks, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, and there's a nice question in the Q&A, Kirsten, if you can see that. Um. Yes, so um, uh, the... So for uh, over a, a finite field, so, um, uh, the uh, three planes that um, give you a square. Um, so over a finite field, we had um, uh, uh, we have we have this um, this growth and fit group, and um, so. In particular, we're going to have a parity condition coming from uh, three planes associated to um, square or non-square uh, local um, local contributions. And uh, if you if you sum all of those non-square over odd degree field extensions with the square ones over even degree field extensions, you'll have to get an even number of those. And over things like cubic surface, this corresponds to the difference between um, uh, hyperbolic and elliptic lines. Um, and if you come up with uh, a sort of intrinsic to the complete intersection definition of what it means for this discriminant to be square or non-square, or more generally what that Jacobian means, then you get a concrete um, uh, uh, totally independent of any, um, uh, of any A1 homotopy theory uh, uh, restriction on, on that. Uh, complete intersection, but even in terms of the Jacobian, we get this this uh, even parity condition. So, um, uh, by motivic, by A one Milner number, um, uh, we meant the left hand side, and then by motivic Milner fiber. Um, uh, I meant the um, the construction uh, that gives you this element of of k naught of varieties um, with this motivic integration. Um, uh, so it's a yes. Uh, um, uh, the construction. Um, the, the construction is a little involved. Um, uh, the way I've seen it doesn't directly use, I use nearby cycles functors, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if that's um, uh, my not knowing how to, how to show the two are, are closely related. Okay, great. Then I have another question, because in this homotopy limit problem, you're completing a two. Is that a, so? So you, yes. you don't don't expect that we need to complete with respect to the half map eta. So just um, the, uh, as far as I know, but I think Tom would be the the better person to um, to answer this question. Okay, then, and then the Q and A. There's another question. Yes, yeah. This yes. That this is the. Um, thank you. So, Cass. Uh, Jesse Leo Cass, um, and I did work on on. 
um, able and Milner numbers. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Great. Any other questions? I don't think so. So thanks again, Kirsten, for a wonderful talk. And see you all um, again tomorrow. We start 1 p.m. Paris time. <laughs>